Hey guys, so I don't know how to say what I'm about to say because I've never had to say it before, but this project is completely under your own risk. I'm not responsible for any harm that may come to you if you don't do this project correctly. I'm only sharing this project because I've created something that works for me and I've been using it safely for the past year and a half and it works great. Yeah, I'm not responsible if you make something that isn't safe. So this is completely at your own risk. Uh, so with that being said, enjoy the video and I hope you guys enjoy the project. See you guys later. How's it going everyone? My name is Anthony and in this video I will be teaching you how to create a Rubik's Cube stick shift for your manual transmission car. This project is not that difficult and you don't have to spend more than $10 depending on the materials you get. I've been using my various stick shifts for over a year now and I can easily say that they can be safe and reliable if built correctly. So let's get into the materials you will need for this project. First thing you will need obviously is a manual transmission car, <laughs> duh, and a cube. Most cubers will know where to get a speed cube, but non-cubers, please hear me out. This project will not work with a store-bought Rubik's Cube. It needs to be a speed cube that you can tension. I will provide some links in the description of where to find some. The cube I used in this particular project was the Mofeng Jiaoshi 50mm 3x3. I chose the 50mm because I wanted to try something new, but for a first project, I would honestly recommend going with a 56 or 57mm cube, such as the Little Magic or MF3. I used the MF3 RS for my white and black versions. I chose that particular cube because it is very cheap and you can find it for around $4 for all different size options. I would also recommend a stickerless model because the stickers on your cube will definitely chip after a lot of stick shift use. You will also need super glue, quick dry epoxy, and a nut that will fit inside the cube and also fit to your stick shift bolt, all of which you can find at your local hardware store. That brings us to right around $10 for this whole project. The tools you'll need for this project are a screwdriver, a drill with various size drill bits, and a vice grip, which is optional and will definitely make your project easier. The first thing you want to do for this project is to go to your local hardware store with your car and take off your car's stock stick shift and bring it into the store with you. Find the hardware aisle, which is where the nuts and bolts will be located. In the video, you see here they have sample bolts that resemble that of your stick shift bolt from your car shifter. You want to find a metric bolt and nut. Standard imperial size will not work for this project. While these bolts are the correct type, however, they are not long enough to sample for the correct nut size. So I will show you another method I found. Alright, cool. So since this won't fit into the little test bolts, what we're going to do is find a uh, size that it could be. So just get any length screw, and it has to be metric. So you just look at the Look at the, the case and make sure it says metric and not standard. Some of them say standard. So we want a M10 because I know this is 10 millimeters. You might not know, but you'll find out by testing different bolts. So I know it's 10, so I want M10. So there's M10 right there. That's 10 millimeters. And um, I know it's either a 1 through a 1.5. That's the thread pitch, so that's the uh, thickness of the thread. So I'm gonna try, since I already know what it is, I'm just gonna try what I know it is, and it'll fit. So. <laughs> Where is it? All right, so it was hard to find the size that I already know fits this, but let's say I didn't. So I look through different bolts, you know, blah, 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 find different ones, and then what I do is, uh, this one already has a hole in it, which is nice, because some of them do, so let's see. Alright, so this is the test, this is how you test if it fits. Fits perfectly. And I can twist. Perfect. So that's the size. Uh, my stick shift is a M10, so 10 millimeter by 1.25 drive pitch. So that's the nut that we want to get. My stick shift is a 10 millimeter, uh, 10 millimeters wide. Come on, focus. Thank you. 10 millimeters wide, and the thread pitch. So I'll show you on this little thing. Uh, at Home Depot, this is what the nuts come in. 
M10 means um, meters, so it's 10 meters, 10 millimeters, sorry. So that's a millimeter, so that's 10 millimeter, and that's the thread pitch right there. So 1.25 is the distance from each thread to the next. Inside of that nut, those little threads, there's different lengths, so this is a 1.25, and as you can see, it screws onto my stick shift perfectly. So that is the one that I'm gonna put into my cube. So it might be different for you, depending on what kind of car you have and what uh, kind of stick shift you have. Um, I feel like 10 millimeters is probably standard, I would assume, for most stick shifts. You're, it's probably not gonna be less than M8, your stick shift, M8 being eight millimeters. So M8, M10, M12, M14, or M16, uh, those are millimeters. So 60 millimeters, 14 millimeters. And honestly, your pitch is probably going to be on the finer side. So a one or 1.25 or 1.5. Just try any combination of those out until you find the sweet spot. Now for the building process. You want to start by taking all of the center caps off of your cube. Set them somewhere where you won't lose them. Then you want to tension all sides of your cube fairly tightly, but not fully tight. Then you want to unscrew the side of the cube that will face down in your car and take all of the pieces off of that face. Then apply fair amounts of super glue in all holes and openings of the cube. Don't put too much because it'll definitely leak out and get all over the surface and on your fingers, which you don't want. You want their stick shift to be nice and smooth, but you want it to stay together like a brick. So just find the right amount that works. Then apply some super glue onto an edge piece on the inside of the cube and place pieces like you would be assembling the cube. Place them onto the edge piece with super glue so they lock into place. Let it dry for a sec and repeat this process until you have all but two pieces put into the cube. So now you have an edge and a corner piece left. You want to take a chisel, a saw, or pliers, anything that can cut, a knife even, just be careful. And you want to hack off the corner stock and you want to hack off the torpedoes on the edge piece. We want to chop these off because we can't insert them into the cube because the cube is locked together. It's important to use super glue because you want your cube to be a solid brick to hold on to. It should not be loose or functional whatsoever. This build is just for looks, appeal, and aesthetic. Now place the pieces you chopped inside of the cube with super glue and you should have a face with the centerpiece missing. This is what it should look like. So then what I did was I put the center cap in, which I wouldn't recommend doing because you're going to end up taking it out anyway or drilling it out. So don't put the center cap back in. So you're going to want to drill directly into the center of the cube. This hole you are drilling is where the bolt of your stick shift will go. There definitely is going to be some excess, so you want to make enough room. Alright, so I put the cloth in this and tighten it. But not too tight because I don't want to scratch the paint. enough so it doesn't move. If it's too tight, it'll break it. You do want to drill fairly deep until you see core dust, as you see here on my finger. In my case, it's blue, but it could be different for you. Blue means you've gotten into the core. You, yeah. As I said earlier, you want to leave enough room for your bolt to go inside the cube. So that's the that's the size for the threading for the bolt of the stick shift. That's where the bolt of the stick shift is going to go in. That just gives it a little extra thing to grab onto. So on the next step, you see here I have to cut away the edges and corners to make room for my nut. Go. Good. Just just big enough for the centerpiece. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I need to make this big enough for the nut to fit in, and the nuts 
bigger than this centerpiece right here. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to drill sideways like this. This is why I said you should use a 56 or 57 millimeter cube. That way you won't have to cut the edges for your nut. The nut will just fit into the cube as it is. So if you use a 56 or 57 mil cube, disregard this section where I cut at the edges. Alright, so here it is in its rough form. This is before I size it for the nut. So what I have to do is, you can see how big that nut is. This is the nut that fits to my stick shift. So I have to cut a hole to size for this nut to fit in. Um, and right, that hole right there is not big enough for this nut to fit. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to bore a hole big enough for this nut to fit. And a half inch drill bit is not big enough and I don't have an inch drill bit. Um, this nut is very, very big. And as you see, you need, you need it to grab onto the walls of the edge pieces. So that's the challenge. I've never done this on a mini cube. I've only used 56 or 57 mil cubes. Uh, I would recommend this build for 56 or 57 mil cubes. 50 mil is a lot harder. Update, I wanna show this because, look, I drilled even deeper into the core. So now you can see inside is hollow. And there's a 3 8 inch hole for the stick shift uh, bolt thread to fit inside. Cause you need to make sure there's enough room for that to fit into the cube because there will be excess. All right, so because this is a mini cube, my, uh, my nut does not fit in to the, uh, the centerpiece area. If this was a 56 mil or 57 mil cube, it would fit perfectly there. And then you wouldn't have to drill a bigger hole. You would just epoxy and be done. So now what I have to do is uh, build a, drill a bigger holes on the outside just so the nut can fit. Um, unfortunately, I don't have anything bigger than a half inch drill bit. I wish I had like a three fourths or even an inch drill bit. Um, so I can just make a big circle. That'd be a lot easier, but I don't have that. I can look for it, but it might take me a while. For this, I think the best thing to use would be a Dremel to get uh, these edge pieces to go back a little farther. I think that would be the perfect thing to use. Uh, instead of a drill bit, using a Dremel, but I do not have a Dremel. All right, so as you can see, the nut now fits into the centerpiece hole. Uh, it's not exactly pretty, but it's okay because you're not going to be seeing this side. It's going to be underneath, hidden uh, by the stick shift handle. And this right here uh, is much easier on a 56 or 57 millimeter cube, but um. You know, I just carved away some of these edge pieces. Uh, I don't have a Dremel. If I had a Dremel, it'd be so easy. I used a drill in some parts and a chisel on others. And a chisel is perfect because it just kind of sanded away uh, a few millimeters of each edge piece. I should have just done that from the start instead of chipping it away with a drill. But um, it worked. All that matters is it works. And you want the hole inside of the core to be directly underneath the hole of the nut. Can you see that? So you see the core hole is directly under the nut hole and that's a very important step because the stick shift is gonna have to go deeper into the cube than just the nut all right so now it's time to mix the epoxy to keep the nut inside of the cube all right so you want to mix these two liquids in equal parts to make the epoxy so I'm using the actual like epoxy uh, case that it came in in my little mixing bowl. Yeah, I want to have my, uh, I want to use the nail as the applicator because what I'm going to do is apply the epoxy in drips uh, on the outside of the nut. I don't want to get inside the nut because it's going to mess with the threading, but I'm just going to apply epoxy in each of these little corner areas here and just get it inside of the core and in the nut so it's very firm to the cube. Because you have to remember, you're gonna be shifting your gear with your hand and it's gonna be applying stress to the nut, but the epoxy dries like concrete, so we have to apply enough in the right areas. And don't mix too much right away, because this dries in five minutes and this process could take longer than five minutes, so it's better, it's better to do less first and then if you need more, mix another batch later. 
Oh, so I use the mixing stick. So you want to mix the epoxy very well. Because if you just if you just put it inside of the cube without mixing it, it's not going to dry hard at all, if it even dries. So mixing it gets all the molecules mixed together. So you'll know it's close to ready when it's like a white, a clear white, like frothy gel. Uh, don't touch this, by the way, and don't breathe this because it's very, very smelly and it'll, st it'll stay on your fingers for a long time, even when washing it in the sink. Okay, so I'm going to take my nail. I want to get a lot on this nail because I want it to drip into the cube. So there's the nail, and now I'm just gonna let it. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to drip. Just get it right in the corner. Just like that. That's perfect because it sticks to the nut and then sticks to the cube. So here's a little bit more of my nail cleaner stick. So this stuff's actually pretty, it's not that thick, so it just pours right, so you have to be very careful with where you apply it, and uh, just be accurate too, because it, it it falls really quick when it's fresh. As it dries out, it gets, gets a little thicker, so just make sure you don't spill it on the cube or in the nut itself. And sometimes what I do is I spin my applicator to keep it from dripping right away. Oh, but this is working very well. So what you'll notice is the epoxy kind of falls deeper into the core. And that's okay, because we want, we want this nut to be in here very strong. So the farther down the epoxy goes, the better. And then as it dries, it'll start, you'll start to kind of make a pile and then it'll just completely Completely immerse the sides of the nut in epoxy, which is which is what we want. So, like I said, you might have to do this process, the mixing, a couple times, maybe two or three, just so you get enough epoxy in there so it's strong. That is why you don't want to mix it all at once, because it'll dry in five minutes and it'll be unusable. So I'm gonna fast forward through this because I've said pretty much everything I need to say. Uh, so just let's fast forward this part. So if you spill epoxy on your cube, just wipe it up immediately so it doesn't dry on the outsides because you don't want to, you don't want glue on the cube because then your grip, it's going to feel very weird. So if it's, you see it starts to want to fall inside of the uh, threading of the nut, I'm just angling the cube back so the gravity takes it away from the nut. So if I were, you see the epoxy's overflowing right here. If I were to leave it like this, it would go into the nut and I don't want that. So what I would do is just angle it this way so the epoxy flows down with gravity away from the nut uh, center. And it looks like it's okay now. So now I can lay it flat. You know, you just have to keep an eye on certain things uh, so you don't mess up. It's not hard, but if you just go too quick and you're rushing it, you can easily make these mistakes and then your your cube won't screw into your stick shift handle. So you just wanna you just wanna be a little careful, certain things, small details. Alright, so it went from being a complete liquid to a very thick syrup in like minutes. So now it's a lot harder to pour, so that's why you don't want to use too much right away. Because as you can see, it's not pouring at all into the cube. Alright, so that's the first epoxy. I honestly think that might be enough for now. Um, but if I see that it sinks farther into the cube, I want to do another layer on top. Just so that it's very strong. Because uh, if there's any gaps, um, the 
the nut will budge inside of the stick shift bolt and then your cue will be crooked on the stick shift handle. And you want this to be super sturdy because this is what connects your hand to the transmission of the car. So the stronger it is, the safer you'll be. I've been driving one of these for on my stick shift for almost a year now and I haven't had any problems. Uh, so you wanna make sure it's really strong. That is the key. You wanna make sure the glue goes all the way up to the top. So it is February the 6th, 2019. I don't even know when I filmed that. It was probably June of 18, but I've been driving this stick shift since I filmed this video. Since I got all that footage and it is still intact, it's still doing good. Just so you know, it's the same one. It is the exact same one. It's the same one. Um, nothing's different about it. It hasn't fallen apart once and I've been using it in my stick shift since I got all that footage. Works great. And uh, I'll show you some test footage of me driving it right now just so you know it actually works. And yeah, I've got some other some other ones as well. I use this one a lot. Um, works good, it's a little bigger. I like this one, it's more comfortable. I would honestly recommend doing this project with a 56 or 57 millimeter as opposed to a 50. It's a little small in your hand, um, but it's all personal preference. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This video has been in the making for a long time, and I'm glad I can finally find the motivation to finish it and share this cool project with all you cubers. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I hope you make one of these for yourself if you drive a manual transmission and enjoy. Take care.